the art of PNID development. Chemical engineering undergraduate courses do not teach the PNID development process as part of their courses. However, many of the elements of the PNID preparation are taught in courses such as unit operation, process control, and process safety. It is also to be noted that in the engineering contractor offices, no or minimal effort is made to bring engineers up to speed on the work processes and te the technical aspects of the PNID development process. Generally, it is left to the fresh engineers to learn these skills on the fly and for the lead engineers to depend on those engineers with previous PNID experience. In this series of videos, an attempt would be made to simplify and bring to you the operational, safety and engineering aspects of the PNID development process that is normally followed in the engineering contractor companies worldwide. Hopefully, it will activate the viewer's thought processes and help the viewers to be better prepared to meet these challenges in their workplaces. If you want more of such experience sharing, kindly like, subscribe and comment in the panel below. The agenda for this session would be what is PNID, when are PNID is prepared, who are the users of PNID? Is PNID development an art or a technical work practice? And finally, a process engineering hack. We see a sample section of a PNID shown here. This PNID shows a fixed roof tank containing water and there are two centrifugal pumps shown on this PNID which takes suction from this tank and the discharge of these two pumps are connected together and they go, go out of this PNID to a destination. We can also see that there is a recycle line from the pump discharge this recycle line has a flow control system with a flow meter upstream of the recycle line and it controls the control wall that is located on the recycle line. So basically the intention of this recycle line and the flow control scheme is to allow a certain minimum flow rate always through the pump. Even if the forward flow is stopped or reduced, this flow meter will pick up the reduction in flow and it will open up the recycle flow to maintain the minimum flow. And then there is this forward flow control which controls and ensures a preset rate of the flow is sent to the destination. So this p and is we can see that there are various valves located at the tanks inlet, a tank outlet to the pump, and then there are pump valve control valve, uh, there are there are isolation valves at the pump suction and the discharge to enable the maintenance maintainability of the pump, and then there are isolation valves for isolating the control valves in case there is a maintenance requirement and bypasses are also provided across the control valves. Okay, so let's move on. <coughs> Continuing on, the PNID you may know that is an acronym for piping and instrumentation drawing. The PNID is a critical communication document 
bet that is used between various engineering groups. PNID is utilized and continuously updated until it accurately reflects various stakeholder requirements to be able to convert the raw material to quality final product. It also provides design information to the vendors via the procurement group to supply various equipment and ancillaries as per requirements. The construction contractors then install the equipment and the ancillaries as per the PNID. And finally, the operation group commission, start up and operate the facility. The PNIDs in general show other needed information such as vessel liquid levels, vessel tangent elevations. They also indicate instrument types and sizes and electrical equipment are also included. So essentially, there are two groups of people who use the PNID. The EPC group, mainly for engineering, procuring and constructing the plant and the operations group to operate the plant for rest of the life cycle of the plant. So we can say that PNID is the mother of all engineering documents. Continuing on, so the PNIDs show all the equipments in sequence and the lines and equipment isolation requirements, various valves, the instrumentation and the control logic associated with the process plan. The line numbers are indicated with the unique alphanumeric number which identifies the size of the line, the piping class, the service that the pipe sees and the insulation and heat tracing requirement. In effect, PNIDs provide a safe and efficient way to start up, operate and shut down the plant. Further, PNIDs could be called as engineering flow drawings, flow sheets, engineering line diagrams, process engineering flow schemes by different companies. So though they are called by these different names, the information contained in them would be the same. When do we prepare these PNIDs? In order to explain this, a project development process is shown in this slide. This is called a fill or a front end loading process. The front end loading process of project definition is a five step process and the, and the very first step in the fell process is a pre fell step in which the management plans for resources they define the roles and assign individuals to different roles they also define the success criteria and the scope of work once the team is formed the fell team is formed the visualization step stops in which the team brainstorms the opportunities and scenarios that are available once the opportunities and scenarios are identified the team sits down separately to identify the risks and find the quick wins having identified the quick wins they get an approval from the management to proceed to the next step which is the conceptualization step. In this step, for the ideas that are accepted by the management, an economic quantification process is started, wherein an order of magnitude costing is done. In this step, various options are defined and they are ranked by risk and effort required. And at the end of the conceptualization phase, the, the management team helps to identify the option that needs to be proceeded further. 
so when the green light is given for further work the project definition phase starts in which a basic engineering takes place in this basic engineering phase the pnids are developed uh, and other activities such as contracting strategies uh, risk plans are also developed an operating plan is developed to identify what kind of people uh, are required uh, personnel are required to operate the plant whether they are available locally what kind of training needs to be done so all this uh, aspects are identified the once after the completion of the definition phase in which the pnid is developed provide a plus or minus 20 percent or 30 percent cost estimate they go ahead to the execution phase during which the detail engineering of the plant occurs in this phase the pnids are further fine tuned to the level of plus or minus 10 percent cost estimate and the pnids are made good for construction stage these issued for construction pnids are utilized for the execution and the supervision of the construction so in summary we can say that the pnids are developed during the basic engineering phase which are further fine tuned during the detail engineering and made good for construction who are the pnid users so as we said there are two groups of pnid users we have the engineering group and the operations group so in the engineering we have different specialists such as piping discipline the piping discipline utilizes the pnids for preparing plot plan 3d modeling they prepare the material take off based on which the pipes and ancillaries are purchased they conduct pipe stress and surge analysis using the pnids the instrumentation group prepare io list they also prepare dcs and plc local instrumentation requirements based on the pnid the static equipment group work on package interfaces using the pnid and the rotating equipment group identify the normal operation safeguarding instrumentation for the rotating equipment from the pnid typically pnids are utilized to identify the nozzle sizes material classes uh, and the schedule the thickness from the pnids the civil discipline uses the pnid minimally just to identify the underground process drain details the construction group utilize the built as per utilize the issued for construction pnid to build the plant the electrical department utilizes the pnid to identify the requirements tracing requirements motor shutdown valves and on off valve requirements so now let's have a look at whether pnids preparation is an art or a technical effort normally as a basic engineering starts the process engineering team works on various equipment specifications and calculations which is a technical effort purely and as it tapers off the pnid effort picks up wherein coordination between various technical group occur to identify all the technical requirements are input into the paint id so the preparation of the paint id is becomes a, largely a coordination effort between various stakeholders finally let's have a look at the process engineering hacks so the very first thing that we learn in an epc company as we enter would be don't reinvent the wheel it's a waste of time it's a waste of effort once we go on 
re uh, reinventing process the trouble is that you have difficulty in getting acceptance from the clients and project teams for example the process engineers work on identifying or selecting various equipment such as exchanger and pumps there are several types of exchangers which could fit in a particular service or sometimes for pumps either centrifugal or reciprocating pump could fit in to certain service it is suggested to have a look at the best practices of the client before making a selection decision which makes it easy to make to sell the decision number 2 is the slurry service requirements in slurry services it is important to on the pump discharges particularly to not place the check walls because the check walls could choke up under the presence of slurry thirdly let us look at the pump auto start requirements in the previous sample pnd that we looked we have a pressure transmitter here located which which senses the pressure on the discharge of the pump and when it drops due to any problem in the pump discharge would activate the pump the spare pump motor so whenever the pump one pump fails the other pump would start automatically to maintain the flow but before the pump starts what happens is this flow control system forward flow control system control valve would tends to go open to satisfy the flow requirement so when the second pump starts the control valve is fully open that is the pump starts under under <clears throat> under full uh, full open discharge so if you look at this pump discharge here a uh, pump performance curve normal rated point is up the curve where the power required is lower and the end of curve power requirements are higher so the best practices are to ensure that pumps that are that are designed for auto start their motors should be designed for end of run power requirements thank you